Hi everyone, Patrick here from Dev Diner and trying something different today. Uh, going to do an online hangout with Matt, the CEO and founder of Clarify. Uh, Clarify, if you don't know them, are a really cool company. Uh, they've got an API that developers can use to add image recognition into any app you've got today. Uh, and I've used it before, it's really fun. Uh, so I thought I'd get Matt to show us what Clarify can do and also asked him a bunch of questions about artificial intelligence and image recognition and how it all works and how we've gotten here today. So here it is. I'm here today with Matt. He's from Clarify. He's one of the head very important and intelligent people over there. He works at Clarify, one of my favorite um, ways to do image recognition. Actually, it's actually the only way I've ever gotten to work. So um, if there's ever a good kind of word of kind of advice from people of where, what to do with image recognition, this is the way to go because it's actually simple. Um, so I'll let Matt introduce yourself a bit, let, let everybody know kind of how Clarify came about and what made you guys start it. Yeah, so uh, I was doing my PhD actually uh, in the artificial intelligence space focused on understanding images and I was doing that right at NYU here in New York and I had some really good results, they started to work, and I knew they worked by tr building a dem uh, demonstration of the technology where I could simply drag in pictures from the web or drag in pictures from my phone, and it would return meaningful things that the AI saw within those pixels of the images, things like dog, tree, mm -hmm. cat, and so forth. And so I knew this technology was ready, and I knew it was super valuable because even from my personal pictures, I wanted a way to be able to organize and search over that media content. And so that was kind of uh, the trigger that got me excited and knew that AI was ready for the real world. And I knew it was applicable across all different industries, all different sizes of businesses, and developers would just run with it and build incredible things. And so that's what we offer up at Clarify is an API for you as a developer to build incredible things in artificial intelligence with images and videos. Yes. I know a lot of the people who come to the site, uh, they've got a whole range of different skill levels. So some of them will be just students who are just kind of like, oh, hey, tech is cool. I'm kind of researching into some particular topic. Um, others will be really skilled developers who are just trying to kind of move into a new area. So there'll be a few people who might not know exactly um, the terms for like what artificial intelligence is or what things like deep learning and neural networks are. And especially in terms of deep learning and neural networks, where to a lot of people, it just kind of goes right over their head and they're like, cool, that sounds really impressive. Um, so would you be able to do a really quick kind of what is artificial intelligence? What's deep learning? What's neural networks in like a simple way of explaining it. Yeah, absolutely. So artificial intelligence is the broadest of any of those terms. And it's uh, a collection of algorithms. So everything's computers that kind of simulate how the brain works. It has some level of intelligence, pattern recognition uh, in these algorithms. But there's a whole variety of different types of algorithms. It could be, you know, game theory or uh, languages built for AI, uh, programming languages built for AI, or uh, one section of algorithms is called machine learning. Mm -hmm. And that section of algorithms is uh, algorithms that learn from data. So those are the types of algorithms we use here at Clarify. Now, the term deep learning is actually a, another subset of machine learning. And deep learning and neural networks are synonyms. They mean the exact same thing. Cool. Um, and and they're named neural networks because of the way they're uh, structured. Maybe I can share my screen. Yeah, um, I definitely do. I have a picture that will help explain this. So here, right on the Clarify site, you can see what a neural network looks like that is applied to images. Oh, yeah. And cool. so what you'll see is it has the pixels of the image as the input on the left. And what it's trying to predict on the right-hand side are a bunch of categories of concepts. Let me zoom in a bit. And so what you need to do um, is formulate how many layers. These are called layers, all the different operations that are applied to the previous layer's outputs, uh, and how many things are within each layer, and so forth. And so that's where AI experts, um, and this is what I focus my PhD on, is uh, are, are good at. They're good at configuring these neural networks. Now, mm -hmm. 
they're called neural networks because they simulate how the brain works. They're built in these layers. Nobody really knows how the brain works, but uh, they approximate some of the, the characteristics of it. Yeah. And that is, it learns from data. So what's actually learned in this neural network, which is called a convolutional neural network, which works well for images, um, are templates. So the convolution operation, which is this first layer, is basically template matching. You take this little um, rectangle or square template and slide it over every location in the image. And when that template matches very well with the pixels underneath it, you get a strong response that mm -hmm. fills in a high value in this, in what's called a feature map. And you see that there's multiple feature maps here because you don't want to match only one template. You want to match a variety of different templates. And the most important thing is these templates are learned from the data. So they start off at random. They know nothing about the world. And they fine tune over time by seeing more and more images that have been labeled with these output categories. And they tune towards things like edges at different orientations or different colored edges and so forth in this first convolutional layer. Um, the second layer is what is called pooling, and this says uh, it's helpful for saying that the boat is in the image, but I don't care where it is. It's still a boat if it's on the left of the image, on the right of the image, at the top of the image. It still looks like a boat. And so the pooling layer does that by taking a small region of these features and taking the strongest one, the maximum element. And that's why the size of these maps shrinks down. Uh, and then you do template matching again. And again, these layers are going to be learned, uh, more pooling, more template matching, until finally you get to the final output categories. And you usually normalize them so there are nice numbers between 0 and 1. And that mm -hmm. gives you a probability of how likely it is that a boat, for example, is in this picture. And off the start, because every, every one of the templates starts off at random, it makes an equally likely guess that it's a dog, a boat, a cat, or a bird. And then it compares it to what a human has said is in this picture. And that is the error signal. It knows the mistakes it's making. And it can propagate that back through the network to adjust all these templates. And that's the learning algorithm. And so you show it millions and millions of images, and it learns from those images how to adjust the templates to be able to better recognize the categories it's being uh, told to recognize. So that gives you a quick overview of how Excellent. neural network or images uh, work. And there's lots of other types of algorithms outside of neural networks uh, within machine learning, such as reinforcement learning. And that's why machine learning is a broader term, which, mm -hmm. uh, again, is a smaller part of the overall artificial intelligence term. Cool. That explains it pretty well, I got to say. Awesome. Um, I, I like the visuals as well. It is good. I can tell you guys have had to explain this many times now that it's yes. on your Clarify <laughs> site specifically. Oh, that's brilliant. So. Um, another thing then, so we can go more deeply then into Clarify's specific approach. So if developers are out there and they're wanting to start doing artificial intelligence stuff and they're wanting to kind of start delving into it, um, you guys do image recognition in particular, and yep. you've got an API that people can just take and use. Um, I can already see on your screen on the Clarify site, you can just click a big button that says get your free API key. And I assume yep. that is a good way to start. Um, but if yes. developers want to get started, um, what can the Clarify API do in particular? And why should they use the Clarify API over, say, going to TensorFlow or any of the other kind of AI things out there? Yeah, so I'll jump right into the, the quick start guide in our documentation, which summarizes the top level um, resources that you can uh, leverage. So. Of course, you got to install uh, either one of our Clarify API clients or you uh, bust open your command line and start doing curl calls. Mm -hmm. Either way, uh, that gets you up and running after you sign up for a Clarify account. And then there's three basic high-level buckets of things you can do. You can predict, you can search, and you can train. So prediction is using one of the models that we have already trained for you to be able to recognize concepts within images. And so this is showing you Python code. This is real world uh, code from our API clients. 
And it's just four lines in order to get AI into your application. Whereas if you consider something like TensorFlow, you have to download it, you have to install it, yeah. you have to start configuring neural networks, you have to know what you're doing with your data and your neural networks, then you have to hit train and it takes weeks of time. So it's really complicated. And, uh, and then what do you do after you get something that works? How do, who's going to be up at three in the morning maintaining <laughs> it? So, Clarify takes care of all of that. So you can focus on building an awesome product and we can focus on the artificial intelligence that powers it. And Excellent. these four lines drop into your code and give you predictions from the general model, which I'll get into in a second with demos. We have a whole suite of different models that are ready to go off the shelf for you. The general model is meant for, you know, if you take your uh, phone out of your pocket, take a picture, it tells you meaningful things. And you can pass in a URL just like this and you get the predictions back. Uh, you can also pass in the bytes of an image so that if you're on a cell phone, for example, um, you can just uh, send in the bytes and we'll understand it directly. So that's prediction. Um, and I'll show you demos for these three things along the way as well. Uh, search, just as simple, four lines of code. So what we do with search is you just send us the pixels of your images. We're going to understand them with the general model and index them for you. So let's say you're a stock photo company. You have a lot of visual content on your site. People are uploading it. And you want to understand it, keep it organized. Um, but you don't want to fiddle with how to index it efficiently or get the best ranking rules so that your search results look great. So we take care of all that for you. You just send in the images, and search just works. So here. Four lines of code, you're creating an image from a URL, and then uh, you're searching by any of the predicted concepts, like dog, for example, will retrieve results uh, ranked by how likely there are dogs in the pictures. So that's the search product. And then training, um, this lets you customize the platform. So now, for the first time, you can actually teach in an API how to recognize the concepts that you care about. And it's just a few more lines of code. It's actually six. There's some redundant lines here showing you that you would actually, in practice, add multiple images with labels to get better results. And so the first two lines are the same, get our client, authenticate. And then when you create an image from a URL, you also pass in the concepts that you're saying are visually present in this image. So the first one has a cute dog, but not a cute cat, for example. Second one, the same. And the third and fourth ones have a cute cat, but not a cute dog. So both positive and negative concepts are important. And then instead of using one of our off-the-shelf models, here you're creating a new model. So this is yours. You own it. You customize it. And you tell it that these are the two concepts that you want in your model to be recognized. You call train. And then it goes in the background and trains your model based on all the data you fed in. And then you can use it right away. Um, and this training process takes literally seconds. That's so cool. you don't have to wait weeks of time to be able to customize AI and get it to recognize exactly what you care about. Because we're doing image recognition, and it does it really, really fast uh, in general from the things I've built with it. How good does it handle video recognition? And is video recognition something that's a lot more complicated to kind of put through? Or is it almost the same sort of concepts? Uh, same concepts. It is more complicated because it's much more data. Mm -hmm. um, and I can show you what we return is a whole time series of information. So oh, cool. an image is a static thing. It's a static uh, capture of the world. but uh, you know, uh, video has a time component to it. And so we represent that by returning concepts over time. And when you plot that out, it gives you an exciting display of what it finds in the video. And then you can search within a video to find exactly what you're looking for. Oh, neat. And then when you've got it like kind of tracking, uh, going through and recognizing things, can it recognize multiple things in the one image? So say you've got a video which has like a dog and a cat and a person and a bike in one kind of frame. Would it recognize all of them, or would it kind of just say, with this much percentage certainty, there is a dog here, and this much percentage certainty, there is a cat here, but it won't know for yeah. certain that they're all there? Yes. So if you look at our demo, um, we show the top 20 things that we think are likely cool. in the image. So this demo is just calling our API, and we built it intentionally to make it very 
easy and accessible to see what our technology does for your images. You can even try your own image right here. Um, and we can it uh, with a few canned images here. So you can, um, if you don't have an image handy, you can see what it does. And so. Cool. Then I say, let's run through yeah. the demo now because it's a good time to just jump into it. Sounds good. Yeah. So here uh, we took the pixels of the image on the left and fed it through our general model, which you can see uh, here. And it returned these categories automatically. So these high level descriptive things like sunset or dawn or reflection, evening are pretty unique to clarify. Um, and then there's other objects like water, boat, uh, sea, and so forth. So we recognize both objects and these descriptive words. And what we also return from the API is how likely the API thinks that these things are present in this piece of content. And so if I switch, uh, I just hit the arrow key to the right, I go to a new image. That's the real time response rate you can expect from our API. It so in a fraction so fast. Second, uh, yeah, and it's exciting because that means you can build real time applications on it. So for example, if you're on a cell phone and you're taking a picture, you can get tags back in real time. If you're at the upload process on the internet to a stock photo site or a marketplace or a social media site, whatever, wherever there's an upload button, Clarify can sit to understand that content. And in this demo, we show not just the general model, but if I scroll down, we have a whole suite of what we call domain models. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you the fun new gallery we just launched a couple weeks ago to display all of them and let you choose which one is best for your application. Um, but this demo shows them as well. So we have face detection. Um, there's clearly no faces for mm -hmm. people in this picture. Uh, we have an NSFW model. So this is looking for pornography. and it lets you filter out the unwanted content. And again, if it sits at an upload speed, uh, upload place, it can be fast enough that it filters out before it even hits your website. Excellent. And then there's a color model as well, which is really uh, fun for um, understanding the dominant colors within the picture. Now, the last example here is a video. So when I click on that, it's going to upload the entire video to our API and run the general model throughout it. And so it just finished. And this, wow. if you see down here, this is showing 2 minutes and 50 seconds. It, that's how long the video is. And we recognized it in about 6 or 7 seconds. So much faster than real time, we can understand video. And we return a whole time series. So much more detail than a human would be able to do, uh, we can return. So these lines correspond to these different colored concepts shown on the right. And let me just isolate one of them, for example, mountain. Uh, so the height of the line, again, is how confident the model thinks that a mountain is present. And when I click, I jump to a scene where there's a mountain. So I can also search for all these different things. Um, like you asked, they're all independent. So that means if I'm looking for something particular like snowy mountains, well, I can look for snow and mountain to be present. When I click there, I jump to a scene where there's snowy mountain or water, snow, and mountain are present. And that's because a lake all of a sudden becomes visually present. Mm -hmm. So much faster in real time, you can understand stuff in much more detail than a human. Uh, so this gives you a sense of uh, the image and video recognition. We also launched something um, a little while ago, which lets you predict in over 20 different languages. That's so here cool. I selected Chinese. So maybe you're building an app that is distributed across across the globe, or maybe uh, you're just based in one country and your native language is not English. Clarify can power your application in that native language. Uh, over 23 different languages are supported in the general model. And all you have to do is when you're asking for predictions in a model, you just tell it which language you want the predictions back in. And to do this, we had to build our own knowledge graph. So we realized that there's lots of words in the world that have multiple meanings. For example, in English, uh, crane could mean a species of bird, or it could be a machine that lifts things. And so we had to factor out all these unique definitions of things in the world that we can recognize, and then we could translate those into the different languages. And so this is the end result of that work. That's cool. So it's not just a direct kind of Google Translate sort of thing. There's a lot more involved in actually saying what the word 
concept actually is rather than just kind of, yeah, translating exactly. your interface. Exactly. Yeah. And so um, the model gallery I was referring to is an awesome new UI we built to let you explore the different offerings we have. Some of them weren't shown in that demo. Um, and we're going to be adding more and more to this to handle different use cases of our technology, either by different vertical, like maybe food as a vertical, travel, weddings, so forth, uh, or by different application area. Um, this one's a fun one, celebrity recognition model. So this is actually finding the face, doing face detection with neural networks again, and then recognizing whose face it is. Um, and it has about 10,000 celebrities that it can recognize. Mm -hmm. And when I try an image with multiple faces, it finds a bunch of the faces and then names all the people in the image. And uh, it's pretty fun to try your own image because you <laughs> get to see who you look like. That's uh, pretty cool. So this is everything I showed so far is around that prediction kind of bucket of operations, predicting over images, over video, over multiple languages, and with multiple different types of models. Uh, but we also have in the search product and the training product, we have built a user interface, which I'm showing here, that lets you manage your data. So no longer do you have to just use Clarify as APIs. You can actually do a lot of the work um, training models, searching over stuff, seeing if it looks good, using our user UI. And when you sign up for an account, you get a link to it. Uh, it's at preview.clarify.com. And so what it lets you do is, both search and training. So in this example, it's stock photos. So this could be a company that works to clarify to index their photos. Um, and when I search, I get results back of dogs, for example. And this was only pixels of images input to the system. There's no manual labeling taking place here. We understood them, and then we indexed them for you and made that indexing uh, very efficient. And it ranks things according to how likely all the concepts it sees are in the images. And you can combine multiple concepts, for example, like dog and grass, to get exactly what you're looking for. Now, we went one step further beyond just concept search. When I go into a single image, you'll see it here on the right-hand side, we're showing visually similar images. So given the image on the left, look up in the data set of images, the most visually similar. and you can do this even with a little crop tool to f help you discover unique parts wow. of your data. So That's here I just super said, impressive. Uh, yeah, it's really fun. And um, depending on your different application, it has a lot of different use cases. So here I'm trying to find stuff that looks similar to that small part of the image. It also lets you take pictures that are not part of your collection. So here is just a picture of a dog from the internet. I can throw it right into my search bar or if you embed Clarify into your application, your own search bar, and it finds, without me saying a word, wow. similar looking stuff. I can also, of course, everything works together, images and tags. So now you can search for pictures that look similar to that, but also have grass present. So that's an example in the stock photo space. But we, we at Clarify work across all different industries. So we have customers even in gardening, for example, who have a lot of imagery that looks like this. And we went one step further with the visual search. If you hit the little eyeball, you can throw it up into the search bar, and it's going to find visually similar content. So this is really handy because I don't know the name of this flower, but I don't need to, to be able to yeah. find more. Um, but you can also search by multiple images. So here it's going to try and find stuff that looks similar to both of these pictures. And what you find is that it recognizes you know, the blue flowers in front, the other type of flower in the background, different angles, different colors, different lighting conditions, all that kind of stuff automatically. And I, again, didn't have to type a single word. And then there's a really obvious application, which is uh, in retail. So if somebody partners with Clarify, they can make their whole product catalog shoppable. So I go to a friend's house, or I see on the internet a picture like this, and I want to know, you know, can I buy this table? I like the look of it. So that's where the crop tool comes in handy again. I crop out a small region, and then I find stuff that looks similar to that region uh -huh. and in real time. So it can make shopping experiences uh, even more uh, beneficial for the end user. So that's the search product. Um, 
again, everything you see in this UI is powered by our API, so you can build all that same stuff right into your application. And then finally, the last demo I want to show is what we uh, call training. And I really am excited by this. And it uh, stemmed from the fact that we, if, if you look at a picture like this, everybody has a different perspective. Something immediately comes to mind. Uh, and it could sit, like it, it might jump to your mind black and white or World War II or New York or kissing or love. There's lots of different things. Everybody has a different perspective. And if you think of all the different models I showed you, uh, we have kind of the, that's a better picture of it. We have the general model, which is a really broad lens. We have these different domain models. But really, if you can customize the platform, then you can recognize whatever you care about, build whatever application you want on top of it. And when so naturally, you have to train our AI platform. And when we looked at how you do it today with play, things like TensorFlow or other neural net toolkits, uh, there's five factors that really hinder you from doing it. You need lots of code. And you have to configure it and know what you're doing. And so you really need a team of data scientists uh, who are experts at this stuff, who are also expensive and hard to find. Uh, you need special hardware. So typically, we train all of these neural networks on graphics cards that are meant for video games. Uh, and then you, the recommended number of examples is thousands per category that you want to recognize. And then getting all that together takes weeks of time. And then it takes additional weeks in order to train the platform. So we wanted to get rid of all five of these factors. And that's what we did. And we like to call it uh, custom training. So again, it's built into the APIs and into this UI. So it lets you um, be able to train things right in here. So these are my personal pictures. And I search for dog. So that's the general dog word. Mm -hmm. The black dog is mine. A brown dog is not mine. And so I want to be able to customize it and, and call my dog by name. So all I have to do is grab a few examples. I don't need thousands. And I add a concept um, to these three images. His name is Rolly, so I just add him to these three images. And then at the top, it said, I've updated these three images. So now if I go in here, what you'll see at the top is a new section called My Predictions. And you're seeing with the green check is indicating that I've manually labeled this image Rolly. And then the confidence is how confident the platform is that Rolly is in this picture. So in a fraction of a second, we've taught the platform how to recognize my dog. I go to the next image. 97%. Next image, 97. Now that fourth image, it shows you the open circle here shows that I did no manual work and still 97% confidence. So according to the model, this is a new image it's never seen before. And it's very confident that this is Rolly. Now let's go to that brown dog. You see uh, still 87% confident. And that's because I never taught the platform that this is not Rolly. So this yeah. is why positives and negatives are important. And you can just toggle it right here and hit train. And then it just takes a fraction of a second. And now it shows that it's 84% less likely that this is rolling. So it's only 3% likely now that this is rolling. So that's what it takes now to train AI. You don't have to have a lot of code configured or any code using the UI. You don't need a data science team to tweak knobs. You don't need special hardware. You don't need thousands of examples. You don't need weeks of time. We got rid of all of that for you. and. We're really excited by what developers are doing on top of it. So I'll show you a few examples of that. Uh, here's the New York Public Library. They opened up images like this very recently. And they categorized them uh, with their experts into these different categories. And so we just dumped in the images and the categories. And then we trained a model. So now it can recognize what things are, uh, are watercolor paintings, as an example. And you can see it's retrieving a huge variety of different types of images. And it's seeing these things automatically. Um, let's see if there's examples. So here is one that the humans have missed. It was never manually labeled watercolor. Ah, cool. So now it can retrieve things that um, you know humans do a little bit of work on, and then we apply it to massive amounts of data. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, our head of the applied machine learning team. He had a newborn baby. He bought a Raspberry Pi for like mm -hmm. 40 bucks and then set it up at the crib to, to monitor the baby. And he trained it to recognize when the baby is standing. 
So you can see different lighting condition, different color. The baby is sleeping, different poses and all that. Uh, the baby is sitting. And then uh, a really important one, the baby is missing. So mm -hmm. now he has basically the most intelligent baby monitor on the planet and spent 40 bucks and signed up for a Clarify account. That's so good. So that's why we're so excited about custom training and working with developers because they're super creative and they're going to come up with more and more applications of Clarify's technology. That is really, really cool. So from my perspective, because um, I tend to look at it from like a whole range of different emerging tech and mushing everything together, do you guys see this being used in other areas too? Like say the more that we kind of start moving down the path of say um, augmented reality and people wearing say headsets and things, uh, would yep. this really work well if you've got like say an always on camera that it can like kind of constantly detect what people are looking at in general? Yeah, absolutely. So all new devices are really exciting to us. Here is a Raspberry Pi, and we just had the little camera module attached to it. Uh, we are talking with a few drone companies, for example. Excellent. They have a wide variety of different applications, some really creative ones where they want to fly up really high to do uh, inspection, look for cracks in different buildings oh, yeah. and different devices and stuff, which would be really expensive to do with with people and cranes and whatever you need. So it opens up a lot of cool applications there. And then, you know, security cameras, for example, or yeah. uh, just mounted cameras, they might not be for security. Uh, for example, in construction sites, we've been approached to recognize when things are uh, messy or, or clean because that indicates if they have to send a safety foreman to the site um, to do inspections. So that's, can ultimately drive a huge cost saving if they send a form in there uh, physically less often. So yeah. lots of really cool applications. That's why we're excited to have a platform. We're not focused on any one vertical. We want to have the features that power all different applications around images and video. Yeah. I like that it's so kind of versatile. It can be used for so many things because it also, it's like a really easy way of just kind of suddenly making your app like crazy intelligent without needing to have done that much, which is... Yeah is very, very handy. Um, exactly. And I think, and I think it's, it's... Yeah, um, go ahead. I was, it can work really well as well. Like, say, people who are out there building AI systems and who are building, like, a robot and stuff, if it's, like, crazy overwhelming to be like, I don't know how to teach the robot when it's going to hit a wall compared to when it's about to reach a window or when it's seeing, like, a child or it's seeing this or that. And stuff like this, where it's kind of like, well, you don't need to really do too much work. You can pass in, say the vision from your robot into Clarify now, and it will just learn and do that for you, which would be yeah. super simple. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's that's what we love because AI is such a crucial thing. It's a huge enabling technology. I think every single product and application going forward is going to need some component of AI. And if we can take care of that for you, that's a huge win for you. Um, you can get, like, think of think of the last time you developed some code. You didn't write a database. Um, you didn't write an operating system. And why would you? There's great alternatives. And we use some of them internally. There's great open source ones. There's great API-based ones. And in particular, we use the API-based ones because we don't want to maintain it either. Uh, yes. And so we are your API for artificial intelligence. And so it's another building block you can use in your arsenal when you're building your products. That is super cool. And I saw on your website as well when I was just kind of scanning through that you guys had one uh, use case where it was more in the medical field where it was scanning, yeah. um, I think it was, yeah, common ear problems. And so it could look yep. through a whole ton of medical grade images of the human ear and pick out the common kind of inner ear issues yeah i think i got it it's uh -huh. kind of gross but um, <laughs> but it, so, it's like yeah. it's super useful because this is more like a lot of stuff which kind of it it's cool initially but it kind of bothers me of a time where like a lot of the tech demos um are very kind of basic like because you always have to start with say learning dog or cat or like with vr it's like look you can pick up an object um but yeah. i love that you guys have been around long enough that it is starting to get used for real world things like say monitoring a baby's cot or 
doing this, which is like, this is potentially life-saving for people. Yeah, exactly. So this is a, another startup in France, and they have that device you see in the bottom right, which attaches to the back of your cell phone. And doctors are using it in hospitals, and it helps them. Uh, it replaces a machine that's the size of a podium, essentially. Mm -hmm. And uh, it helps them diagnose diseases. So that collects data. And they sent us about 75,000 images with 10 different diseases that are shown here. And we just trained a model. And it can recognize these 10 diseases. And they're using it now in real-world patients and claiming over 99% accuracy. Um, so that is really good. Yeah, it, it's it shows the breadth of these different applications and how they can really affect real world applications. And we're not replacing the doctors; we're just helping them scale up because now they can speed up their diagnosis and treat more patients. Yeah, which is very handy. The more that the population yeah. grows, uh, and it'd be cool to see, like, because that's something you can bring into like third world countries and stuff, where if exactly. there's like one doctor for like an entire community then yeah, exactly. their life becomes super easy. Uh, or at exactly. least slightly easier, I guess. Super easy for a doctor is probably not ever going to happen. Um, okay, and so another thought I had is because Clarify works with a bunch of different programming languages, yeah. I know that developers all the time when they come to me and they want to start doing stuff with artificial intelligence or literally anything at all, almost the first question they always ask me is what programming language do I need to use to do this? Is there any yep. language which is particularly better for, say, even just artificial intelligence in general? So say they were going to use Clarify as one part of it. Um, is there any language that they should focus on or that is easier for them to kind of, say, expand later on into other areas too if they use, say, Clarify as one part, but they want to throw in other stuff later? What would you recommend? Yeah. So you can see we have API clients in JavaScript, Python, Java and Objective C. So, you know, a front end language like JavaScript is great if you're building UIs around this stuff. It can talk to the APIs um, and interface with a lot of UI like image loading and display and all that. Mm -hmm. um, if you're building back end servers, uh, Python is usually a great go to language there because uh, it also has a lot of libraries for matrices and image loading and all that kind of stuff that you want to do on the back end. Yeah. And, lots of other machine learning tools um, as well. So that's our go-to internally as well. A lot of our API services are built in Python. Cool. Uh, and then Java and Objective-C, of course, help you get onto mobile devices. So Java for Android, Objective-C for iOS. Um, and Java, of course, will work on servers as well. Um, and Objective-C on your OS X laptops and, and so forth. So. Uh, it's really up to you, um, yeah. but I, I would recommend Python if you had to pick one, um, just because the, there's a lot of machine learning uh, and matrix multiply stuff um, built into the Python language that isn't as nice in the other languages. Yeah, cool. That is very valuable knowledge to have. Um, and then we're getting close to the end of all of my questions, which is cool. Um, second last one is more of a general kind of uh, I'm interested just to see your own thoughts on this, is how fast is AI developing and kind of how far has it come since when you started doing Clarify and even just when you started kind of doing your kind of initial work at the university to now, how fast has it advanced and how fast do you think it's going to advance in, say, the next year or two? Yeah, it's... It's incredible, actually. I think it's one of the fastest paced technology improvements ever. Um, and so a lot of the algorithms that are in use today, these neural networks, they were actually invented back in the 70s and 80s um, mm -hmm. by people like Jeff Hinton and Yan LeCun and Joshua Bengio. You'll hear those three names in particular are thrown out a lot. And so I was very fortunate to go to University of Toronto for undergrad and do my undergrad thesis with Jeff Hinton. Oh, uh, I was the first taken an undergrad. So that's where I really got my first taste of machine learning. It happened to be my resident advisor on the floor I was living in, um, who I went to for some advice about which uh, specialization of engineering to go into. And he showed me this video of a flame flickering. And he said it was completely generated by neural networks. <laughs> and cool. Yeah, I knew how to program at that time, and there was no way I could write functions or loops to generate a realistic video. 
Um, so I had to learn more. That's what got me hooked on machine learning. Did my thesis with Jeff. And then uh, ever since I was a kid, I really wanted to start a business because I think it's one way you can have a massive impact on the world. Yeah. And uh, I knew at that point it had to be around machine learning, but I didn't know enough about machine learning to start a company. And that's what brought me to NYU for my PhD. And so over those four years, which was between 2009 and 2013, I focused on the images. Uh, but really around the end of 2012, it happened that it was Jeff Hinton again from Toronto and two of his PhD students that had really groundbreaking results on image recognition that blew away all the other algorithms out there. Uh, there's this competition called ImageNet that's held every year. And uh, they submitted a neural network that was trained on graphics cards and probably the biggest neural network ever trained at that time. And everybody else who entered was doing handcrafted algorithms like edge detection, color detection, simple stuff. And they were all sitting around 26, 27% error rate. Mm -hmm. That's how many mistakes you're making versus Jeff's team was down at 15%. So they mm -hmm. literally blew out wow. every other algorithm. And everybody who was developing those other algorithms all of a sudden realized how powerful neural networks were. And um, they all all of a sudden believed in Jeff, who has been working on these things since the 70s and 80s. And and Yan LeCun, who I got to collaborate with at NYU as well. Um, so that was an exciting time, and I picked up those results and, and had some new additions to them throughout 2013 um, that ultimately became the start of Clarify. And as soon as I incorporated, I actually submitted the first five neural networks I had training to ImageNet of 2013, and they ended up winning the top five places in the company. Uh -huh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it was a great way to kick off the company because... Uh, we started with the world's best image recognition. We've been improving it ever since, and it drove a lot of inbound interest in uh, developer community and mm -hmm. enterprises and uh, press as well and investors. So, uh, and my best result at that time was about 11%. So, take that, that was only a 12 month difference. We went from 15% to 11%. And then that competition, it's kind of the academic benchmark for image recognition. It's yeah. improved down about 5 or 6% in, wow. in 2014, and then 2015 and 16 is now down around 3 and 3.5%. Three and so That's pretty every, exponential yeah. improvement right there. Yeah, exactly. Every year we're seeing these huge leaps, and we see that not just for image recognition, we see it in speech recognition, for natural language processing of text, um, for all different types of machine learning, we're seeing these huge leaps in performance from these old algorithms that now have the computation with GPUs and now have the data that can feed into them thanks to the internet. Um, so it's a really exciting time and everybody should get involved in it. That's cool. So is it mainly the, is it pretty much that pairing between say having much faster processing power these days available a lot cheaper and having plenty of data because you've got the internet? Or is a lot of it also yeah. kind of the smarts behind it and they're improving the algorithms? Or is it kind of a mixture of everything? Yeah, I mean, the, the initial trigger back at the end of 2012 and 2013 was the uh, computation and the data. Mm -hmm. But now, because because that worked, now there's a huge influx of research activity and everybody who is doing other stuff is now switching to uh, neural networks. Yes. And so there's a lot of new ideas as well. So it's not just the 80s algorithms. Now yeah. it's, it's also new algorithms and there uh, or new features in the algorithm and stuff like that. And they're starting to work really well. That is really cool. Got everybody excited again because they realized they could actually start doing cool stuff. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Then to finish up, um, because we've just got a ton of developers who are watching um, or listening um, who will be kind of interested to get involved in artificial intelligence in some way or another. Uh, what's the final piece of advice that you'd give people if they came up to you in the street and they were like, hey, Matt, I really want to get into AI. How, what should I do? How, where do I start? Yeah, I think a lot of the attention in AI and the immediate thought is to, you know, try and do this all yourself mm -hmm. and go do a PhD or try and take a Coursera course or a Udacity course or any of these. There's lots of different resources now online, uh, which are great. It'll, they'll give you the, the base principles. But I think a lot of what's unsolved in AI, it's not just the neural networks and the core algorithms. It's how you actually build 
products and applications on top of it. I think that's where the development community is going to lead the way. And so you don't have to necessarily know all the inner workings of these things. You can use services like Clarify and start trying to figure out what is the optimal interface to expose artificial intelligence to a human. Yeah. Because I think that is a huge problem that's unsolved and you can get started on today. And of course, uh, we're always hiring at Clarify as well, both interns and full time. So you can be a part yeah. of it here um, too. There you go. So no excuses. If you're a developer and you're like, oh, I don't know where to go to work in AI, just go work at Clarify and you've got exactly. options sorted. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time, Matt. That was absolutely incredible. Um, I can personally say that Clarify has advanced like crazy, even in like, I think I used it last maybe a year and a half ago and you guys are already doing like, say, two, three times as much as it was able to do when I first kind of built my first demo with it. So you guys are doing great stuff. Keep it up. Awesome. Thank you very much.